Aren't you glad that car showed up there? Because it proves my point exactly. Hey everyone, this is Rocco coming at you for my first 11.4 that 9 drive. We are doing our Carl Sandburg route this morning with a slight, well, I guess it's going to be a slight variation this time. Uh, because we're going past the hospital store to see if there's any any furniture I can pick up. But um, we have single stock enable. Uh, we just downloaded the latest map data. Uh, oh wow, it's immediate now. That's frustrating. Um, 2023.44, as you can see, the alarm immediately notified me of using the screen. It might get bad enough now, I'm gonna actually have to disable full self-driving to do stuff on the screen, which is frustrating because it technically makes me less safe, but it removes the liability from Tesla. So that's, that's frustrating. Um, but anyways, yeah, so we're gonna see how it works. I wish they would fix the speed limit on this road. The speed limit on this road is 45 mile an hour, as you can see by this sign. But, you know, it decides it wants to go 25 the whole time. If they can fix that, I think we can have zero intervention drives all the way to Carl Sandburg, not just disengagement. I'm not sure this is gonna be any different than, what was it, 11.8.4.1, or whatever it was on the previous previous update uh, but you know so far so good to see if it's gonna actually merge onto the highway with a blinker I would guess it is not so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the blinker on this is what it should do yeah so that's what it should do but it doesn't do it should turn on the blinker and go ahead and get over and not just like super merge at the end I know that's apparently like a big debate from everyone, but I very much digress that it should go ahead and merge over when it has the opportunity. Let's see if it's going to read this electronic speed limit sign this time. Not at all. So we're going to go ahead and you don't really have to, that's just a warning for the speed limit change. The speed limit change is right up here where these signs are. But um, still, we're gonna, you know, slow down. Because they are doing construction on the bridge up here. And there's a very high chance there is a police car waiting for people to speed. Yep, see right? There they are, two police cars waiting. No, don't speed in construction zones, especially like this one. But yeah, so I'm curious, what I've noticed with the navigation updates is that it will not actually take effect until like one or two drives after. It's like it has to like process in the system or something. You know, it says it's on here. It's not actually eff effective until like a few drives later. Because I've noticed like I get the nav update. You know, I've, I notice a couple changes, but then like a week later I notice more changes with no additional update, which is weird. It's like it's having to process it or something. So. I'll, I'll tell you if I notice anything, I definitely noticed the biggest thing on the previous update, which is everyone's getting with the holiday update, is much faster navigation. When I made these nav points, it's just, it's instant now. And please, please do not break it, Tesla. <laughs> please. I've been waiting like a year and a half for that to get fixed. It drove me insane. I'm so thankful that's finally fixed now. It's just, that's one of the last things that's frustrating me. The only last thing uh, is the ability, doesn't matter this time of year, but the ability to turn off the heat. You see it there's an air conditioning button right here. There should be a heat button that says, I do not want the heat coming on no matter how high I turn the temperature. That's basically what that will do. And the reason for that is I do not have a heat pump. And during the summertime, it's cool in the morning time, but it's comfortable. And I don't want the heat turning on in the summertime. And it happens every single morning. 
So it's, the, it's ridiculous to have to turn down the temperature in the sun, or turn off the AC until it warms up the car, then turn it on. So it's not turning the heat on and wasting wasting energy. Not to mention, more importantly, it makes it not comfortable. I saw Mike um, posted something this this morning and it showed a stop sign. But this is really cool. This must be the new nav data or new update or something. There's a Model Y behind me and if, that they saw my car get off the highway. It's kind of weird get off the highway here. I don't know who that is. Um, but it's cool that it shows where the stoplights are. I really like that. I like I like the little changes like that. That makes everything really nice. And if, it, if it wasn't clear, this is the holiday update. Though I can't say there's too much of a holiday update. Ooh, this is new. I wonder if that comes back on the next time you turn the blinker on. So we'll see that that X is there. So if you want to temporarily get rid of it, and then it will come back on the next time. I like that. I hope that's what I hope that's what it did. That was a smooth turn. Yeah, I noticed that you can notice this uh, terminology on here is um, much more apparent. Like, put your hand on the wheel, apply light force the wheel, etc., etc. It seems pretty smooth though this morning. Though it needs to get in the right lane. Wait a second. Where's it going? Oh, I that's I navigated to the wrong place. Well, we're gonna have to manually take over, unfortunately. Um, let's see here. Okay, that's my fault. I did the wrong address. We're just a little bit down this road here. But it's been doing good. I'm not gonna count these as disengagements just because, you know, I did it wrong. I'm so glad they added the one one stock press on here to get it just, to me it's safer because I've accidentally quite a few times enabled, um, enabled uh, uh, cruise control when I wanted full self driving and didn't realize it and then it's like, wait, why, am I, why is my car not seen straight? <laughs> And then all of a sudden, yeah. So we're going here, we're all, we'll see you on the way back up. You are heading back. So I wanted to point out this parking lot here. This is like a makeshift, like funneled, like they, they want you to go one way through this gravel parking lot. And I just, I think it's gonna take at least version 13 before that happens. Version 12, I think might get us level three on normal roads, uh, maybe level four in some restricted areas. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna do stuff like this. This is to, to me is like level five. It says exit only. It has to be able to understand this very unique exit only sign. Be able to come around here, and then it has to know traffic's gonna come in from the left. So if it if it meet, if it meets a car like this exact scenario, then it has to know what to do. It has to be able to take a wide turn here and be able to come back around. That's like, you know. That's not an easy scenario. To keep our route more consistent, we're gonna come and take a right here. But yeah, that's not an easy scenario. I'm, I'm really glad that car showed up there because it proves my point exactly. Um, let's see what happens when the routes go in the wrong one. Yes, oh, that's gonna suck. I mean, maybe it just as long as you, you know, as long as it doesn't strike me by by doing that, then I'm okay with it. It's just, um, it is a little bit frustrating. As long as it doesn't strike me, I'm totally okay with it. It's actually preferred that it does that. You know, it keeps me on, it keeps me honest, it keeps me attentive, tentative to the road. Let's see, is this gonna go, sh nope. This road right here has been closed for like the last six months or something during construction. But I don't necessarily mind because the route we take is this way and go going back and it's just a lot more uh, it has a lot more turns and more complexity so it makes a better test route this route I don't know we've done maybe one time it's not a it's not a standard test route for me so keep that in mind that like all this is standard up until this light right here everything is standard until we get there it makes me wonder now if it's since it's using this type of map data where it knows what the lights are 
And maybe it was anyway, it's just now graphically showing it. And maybe it can, you know, be ready for lights to stop. Right here, I know this light's red, but it's not slowing down yet. Until now. That's, in my opinion, is way too late to slow down. And it's getting in the wrong lane. It says getting in lane to follow a route. This is the wrong lane. It's taking a right turn up here. And so it has to get back over it. Yeah, see right there. It's something to do with this intersection right here. It just gets confused and thinks it needs to get over a lane. And that's wrong. Because it has has to get stay in the right lane. I've disengaged several times there for feedback and clearly they haven't learned yet. I, I think it's doing pretty well this morning though, considering. Maybe I'm just in a really good mood. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, that does play a role. I definitely noticed that the type of mood you're in plays a role in how well you perceive full self-driving functioning. When I'm in a bad mood, full self-driving just seems to be doing so bad. But when I'm in a good mood, it just seems to be doing better. I think that plays a massive role in how well you perceive the software to work. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at your own bias, biases and how, how it functions. Okay, well, see, it's stuff like that is kind of annoying because it confuses the people around you. So I finally decided to get over. As it knows where we have a turn coming up. It's past... Oh, this is different. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Yeah, so we're getting over at this light. How is it going to handle this light right here? So this car, see, didn't turn its blinker on. My car, I think... Awesome. I don't know if that's new behavior, but that's exactly the behavior it should be doing. That's great. It, it crossed the yellow line because the, the traffic was too backed up. And now you're going to make the light. You can... I'm super timid coming through here. But smooth. I I mean... I, I would have stayed a little bit further to the right. Uh, got a little bit close to that uh, bolt right there. But otherwise, I thought it did really well, actually. Really smooth. And so we have a, we do have a roundabout coming up. This is the same one we're going to come on our next drive. I wonder if it slowed down for those railroad tracks or it's because the car in front of me is why it slowed down. But that was the perfect speed to go over those railroad tracks. And I do say this, this road's somewhat narrow. Well, okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not that narrow, narrow comparatively. Let's jinx it. We're gonna jinx it. See, you can tell. Look, it's it's moving to the right. Maybe they fixed that. I'm hoping to see what Chuck and Mike say. But this this is new, fairly new. It seems to be moving to the right now, uh, instead of just breaking. Right here, I moved again to the right. Moved again to the right. And this is definitely wide, so this is not narrow right here. Let's see how it handles this roundabout. I haven't... I've only maybe one time come through this route. I got an Ionic 5. So I don't know why it's stopping. I'm just letting it... I'm letting it do it. Okay, besides the... A lot of hes hesitancy at the beginning. I thought that did pretty well. So basically, the only difference between uh, my normal test route um, is that we would take this road. It's just a straight shot. So this adds a little bit more complexity. And so the fact that it's making all this extra complexity right in here, quite a bit more complexity because of that round the belt. Um, and as long as it makes it, then this is obviously no zero disengagements. And we have... Uh, Zero disengagements while it being more complex. Let's see if it's gonna break at this sprinkling yellow. Weird, because it doesn't have the traffic light here because it's a construction zone. Interesting. I 
wonder if that's just because of map data or tell me what you think that means because it doesn't have the traffic light there is it just because it's a construction zone and they got rid of it on the map data or disabled it maybe it's still showing in the back end but it's just disabled so it braked a little bit from that car behind me at least it appears to have done that I'm just glad that it's way better than it was a year ago. It was just so bad. I, mean, I don't know if it's a year, year and a half ago, or two years, whatever it was. But it, like every other car would just break, and it was just I didn't want to use it. I didn't want to use full self driving because it was just so unsmooth. It was just so frustrating. It, but they've done they've done a lot of work, and like I can, I feel so much more comfortable. Just I'm almost to the point of just saying, let me use Vision and let me just sit back and look forward and I'll be ready to take over. Let's see how smooth it's gonna make this turn. We haven't done this turn in quite a while. From this direction, rather. Hey, I think that did, did really good, actually. Let's see if it's gonna, oh yeah, what I wanted to do last time, we had to disengage you last time. Let's see if it's gonna turn in the parking lot. Now you're gonna, you need to slow down. Breaking a little bit too hard. Oh, 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 no, I I'm not counting that because that I jerked the wheel too hard. Let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna park here though. That's great. Um, first time ever being able to pull in that parking lot. First time ever. So that's awesome. But yeah, that's your own disengagements from my book. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go on a hike, come back out, do Hendersonville route, do... We're gonna do the Aldi route, we're gonna go stop past the Supercharger, so I'll show you guys that, and then we'll go home. Thanks everyone.